Hi, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm at Land Rover's headquarters in the Midlands of the UK, and there's an event going on tomorrow where they're unveiling the new Range Rover. It's happening in here, and I'm just, I'm gonna have a look what's going on. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm even supposed to be in here. There's a press event happening, but I've just gone behind the scenes to see what the cars actually, here it is, come have a look. Oh my gosh. It looks like a Range Rover quite clearly, but it's like they got rid of all the lines from it. Wow, I like this paint. Can we have a look at this one in white? This looks, this is the long wheelbase. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this new Range Rover, the exterior design, the interior, the technology, the chassis upgrades, how it's got loads of paints, more paints than any other Jaguar Land Rover car in the history of the company. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Range Rover. I mean, it's clearly identifiable as a Range Rover. I'm not just saying that because it says it there. It looks like the old one in terms of the design, but it's just modernized, it's smooth, it's sleek, it's cool. I also like the fact that they've integrated all the sensors and the cameras and stuff for the self-driving technology here in this lower part of the grille. You can't really see it. Speaking of the lower grille, it's different depending on which model you get. So the SV has a slightly sportier look. Here at the side, you notice there's less lines going on, just one or two here and there. It's quite a smooth look, isn't it? I'll tell you what also makes it smooth. See this bit here, the way the bodywork is actually curled over so you don't have traditional seals there's obviously still seals in there otherwise water would get in but it's really cool the way they've done that like this as well this part here it's not plastic one big piece of glass and of course look door handles that pop out when you want to get in the car there you go last thing to mention alloy wheels start at 20 inches rising to 23 inches apparently the 23 inch wheels are the same way as the old 22s and if you have the sv version you have slightly different looking wheels here at the back Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I kind of want to... There's no exhaust pipes there. Well, they are, they're hidden underneath. Thank you very much, Land Rover, for not fitting your new Range Rover with fake exhaust pipes like you might get on some German SUV. Also, thank you for fitting it with these super cool lights. And you see the indicators? They're like hidden until they illuminate. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this thing. Here on the inside, it's a similar story to the exterior where it's the same, but modernized. So you've got horizontal lines on the dash, a big centre console, it's actually flat topped. And look at this, the wood veneers in this one, they're unpolished, really, really nice, and the door trims. So this is the SV model, and you can get it with ceramic bits. Look, these are ceramic bits. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going ceramic bits. <laughs> I'm kind of impressed by them though. Now I'm going to talk in detail more about the infotainment system a bit later on in this video. Even though this new Range Rover is pretty much the same length as the old car, They've increased the wheelbase, so the distance between the front and rear wheels by about 75 millimeters. I say about, it's pretty precise, isn't it? 75 millimeters. <laughs> anyway, what that means is that you've got more room in the back. Look, more knee room, it's good. This is the five seater version and you can get it with electrically folding armrest shenanigans for added poshness. But do you know what? This isn't quite posh enough for me because I still feel a little bit too close to the person next to me. And I don't like the option of having someone being able to sit in the middle either. Ugh, I'm too rich for that. I need something else. Now this is more like it. You can get a four seater only version. So you have your own individual luxury chair with loads of reclining ability, loads of knee room because this is actually the long wheelbase car. So this increases the distance between the front and rear wheels over the standard car by 200 millimeters. And it's also 75 millimeters longer than the old long wheelbase Range Rover. And we've got all the mod cons here. So we have an electrically operated table system for if I wanted to do some work. I don't really want to do some work. I just want to chill out, really. Look at this, there we go. I could work if I wanted to. This is sturdy, this is, wow, quite impressed by that. And under here, we have a fridge. They've obviously prepared some drinks for me. That's very kind of you, Land Rover guys, thank you. You don't mind if I... Yeah, it's not for me, is it? It's for the guests who are gonna be coming in here to look at the car tomorrow. I'm just some internet pleb. In fact, if you're an internet pleb and you've got a big family, 
then you might need a different version of the Range Rover. So for the first time ever, Land Rover has gone and built a seven seat version of the Range Rover. And it really is quite roomy back here. So it's designed to be able to take adults in every single seat. So I set up this middle row in a position that I'd be comfortable in, sat there, and I've still got decent knee room here. And I like the fact that these seats are raised quite a bit off the floor, so you don't feel like you're in a stress position. You can put your feet underneath the seats in front. Take the notice of my um, rather patriotic socks, but this is a Range Rover after all. And they've padded all the panels here in the back as well with luxurious leather, so you don't feel like you're in the cheap seats. As with previous Range Rovers, you have some very comfy front seats with adjustable armrests. So it feels like you're sat on a throne. This time around though, they've upped the leather quality. So it's more like the leather that you get on expensive furniture. Though if you don't want to kill any cows, you can get a vegan friendly interior. The car is also fitted with a special bacteria filter in the cabin air filter. So it doesn't matter if someone accidentally lets off a cheeky fart. You might not even hear it either because the car's noise cancelling software is played through the headrest there. So you don't hear any unwanted noises. Probably not farts, more like tire noise. Now let's check out some of the technology. So you've got this big digital driver's display, which is nice and clear, and it's got different menus and views. Also they've designed it so it looks like it's floating. Can you see that? Another thing you should have a look at is the main central infotainment screen. It's slightly curved. It's really modern. Obviously it's running JLR's very latest infotainment software. In fact, this car's got 70 different ECU brain modules, which you can update over the air. It's a bit like with your mobile phone, you know, it just does it all for you. And you always have the very latest software. Speaking of technology, Land Rover has registered 125 new patents for the technology in this car. For instance, in the lights, there's over 1 million little individual mirrors, which can reflect the light and distribute it in the beam. For instance, when you're driving along, it can block out part of its beam so it doesn't dazzle oncoming drivers. That's nothing new. For instance, Audi uses similar technology. However, their system can apparently only block out eight different areas of its beam, so eight different cars. Whereas this one can block out twice as many, 16. 16, the yeah, Audi, have that. There's another patent for these tail lights. So the light you're seeing isn't just coming straight out from the LED. It actually is beamed forwards and then it's reflected back and that's why you get this diffuse effect. Why have you come back to me, eh? It's diffuse. Here at the back, you've got a classic Range Rover feature, the split tailgate. Obviously, you've got a big boot. There's even a decent amount of space when you have it in seven-seater mode. Fold down the seats, which you can do electrically. You've got loads of room. You can also get the car, wasn't it called? An event suite. So look, you can lift that up there and then use this as a viewing platform at the races. You actually have some special cushions, but the guys are getting the cars ready for this special event tomorrow for customers that don't know what they've done with the cushions. So I'm just gonna simulate it now. There we go, excuse me. Sorry about this. <laughs> it's a bit like this, you, you can get the idea, look. Oh yes, oh. comfy, comfy, yeah. The new Range Rover comes with electrically operated air suspension as standard. When you're driving at speed, it will automatically lower to reduce drag. Also, it works in conjunction with the satellite navigation to figure out whether it needs to slacken off or get a bit stiffer depending on the road conditions ahead. Speaking of which, the car has a 48 volt anti-roll system. So it basically props the car up in the corner so it doesn't lean about and lollop around when you're going through some bends. Apparently the force of those anti-roll bars can exert almost 1,400 newton meters of pressure to keep the car upright, which is quite a lot of pressure. Another thing this car has is an electronically operated rear differential. Meanwhile, the four wheel drive system can actually switch to two wheel drive mode to help save fuel. The big news is though, that the car now comes as standard with rear wheel steering. So when you're going slowly and maneuvering, it can turn the back wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheels by up to seven degrees. And that means the turning circle of this big Range Rover is just 10.95 meters. By comparison, a little Mercedes A-Class's turning circle is 11 meters. So this can turn tighter than an A-Class, bizarre. Let's talk about the engines. So there's two diesels both three litre straight sixes, 300 horsepower and 350 horsepower. Mm. Then there's a three litre straight six petrol with 400 horsepower, or the one in this car, it's a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower. You get that in this SV model. 
Now, if you want a plug-in hybrid, they've updated them. So the plug-in hybrids now come with a 36 kilowatt hour battery pack, which can give you an electric only range of up to 62 miles. It'll also do over 80 miles an hour on electric power alone. You can charge them as well using 50 kilowatt chargers, so fast DC chargers, it's impressive. As you can see, the guys at Land Rover are covering the cars back up, getting it ready for tomorrow's event. So I'm gonna get out of here, but I'm gonna give you some quick stats. So this new car is built on an all new platform and it's 50% stiffer than the old car. The shape is 12% more aerodynamic and the body is quieter. So it's 24% quieter than the old car. Yeah, look, look, they're wanting to leave. I've got a few more things to tell you first though. I'm just hiding here so those guys can't see me because I need to tell you that while Range Rover is all about the look and the luxury, they're also about the off-road capability and this new one is no different. So the ground clearance is 30 centimetres. Then you can actually increase it by up to 15 centimetres. The wheel articulation is almost half a metre. The wheels can move by that much, half a metre, it's insane. It also has a new wading feature. So at the press of a button, the car will jack itself up as high as possible on its air suspension so it can go through water safely. In fact, the wading depth of this car is 90 centimetres, which is the same as the new Defender. Finally, let's talk about the price. So the new Range Rover will start from around £95,000. However, if you go for the V8 version with the long wheelbase and all the luxuries, you could pay around £150,000. So I probably shouldn't lean on it because is rather expensive and I can't afford it. Still here. Come on. Come on. Oh. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWag to see how much money you can save on a new car. Bye.